So how do you take pictures on a microscope? I'm gonna show you uh, putting your phone up to it. I'm gonna show you having an actual smartphone microscope holder. I'm gonna show you a USB microscope that goes up through the eyepiece and then a sort of more professional camera that goes on the trinocular port, which can either be go to your computer via USB or could put images onto an SD card. Well, you might say, aha, just use your smartphone and put it right up against the eyepiece. That'll take some great photos, right? Well, let's, let's try it out. Okay, this is at the 10X objective with 10X eyepieces, so this is 100 times. I'm gonna try and just hold my phone up to here so you can see what this image looks like. Okay, so it's, it's not bad. You kind of have to really hold it on there nice and tight, otherwise the image will kind of shake around. And there we go. So yeah, I mean, it, you know, this works okay, especially with the 10X eyepieces. This, this tends to work a lot better. The 25 times eyepieces, it, it just gets way harder to do because basically the way to explain it is that the optical alignment between the camera and the eyepiece has to be way more precise. And so with any amount of handshake, it's gonna kind of go all over the place. Uh, but this doesn't look too bad. These are also relatively large diameter pupil eyepieces. So it's not as much of a problem. The, I don't know, this is a, $20 a kid's microscope, and you'll see the little glass actual entry point here is super tiny, so trying to center your phone over an even smaller smaller piece is way harder. So that worked okay. Um, you know, a little inconvenient. I mean, you have to really hold it with one hand, be really steady, and that's where these smartphone uh, microscope, universal smartphone microscope adapters come in. So you basically just unclamp it and then put it around this. Okay, so that is holding it on nice and tight. Now I'm gonna get my smartphone on over here. So this, so the problem that I'm having with this right now is that it actually, it can't go low enough right now because my camera is in, in a spot such that it just doesn't, doesn't line up over the thing. So this was a fail. Um, this universal smartphone adapter did not work for my pic Google Pixel phone. And that's just the way it is. And this is why we chose on the Horizons kit not to include a universal smartphone adapter because they're just not universal. And there's a reason why every single smartphone adapter on Amazon is rated four stars. And it's because it works for the people that it works for, it works great for, but there's a good chance that you don't actually get it to work as I have here. I don't think I mentioned this, but this is our Horizons microscope that I'm using here. It has a reflected light illuminator. It is a trinocular capable microscope and the actual, the Horizons kit that you get includes a bunch of other stuff. But the next thing we're gonna try out is one of these USB eyepiece adapters. This has a little whoop cover on it. And this goes in place of your typical eyepiece and it slots in there. This one fits pretty nicely. And then you can just hook this up to your computer and try it out from there. There are a bunch of these on the market. And unfortunately what I've come to learn is that even if they look exactly the same, they could function entirely differently. And unfortunately the microscope market is fraught with, or the microscope camera market is fraught with confusing marketing and product specs that don't really mean a whole lot and microscope cameras that look identical but are completely different. So the color accuracy on this thing is not quite ideal. It's not, it's not horrible, but looking through even my phone. Oh, okay, this is getting a little bit better. I'm in a little different of a spot. You also notice this looks a lot more magnified than it did when I was using my phone. And that's because of something called crop factor. So you have to take in mind, consider that there's an actual physical size to the image sensor on these things. And so, you know, if you imagine that there's like an image coming out of your eyepiece that's like this big, but the physical size of the eyepiece camera sensor is half that size, then it's gonna look double as magnified, right? And so that's what's going on here. Um, so, so yeah, this looks, this looks pretty good. The, I wonder if my brightness is all the way up to look a little bit better, but the frame rate is, is pretty good. Definitely above 25 and hey, you can actually see the, uh, oh, I like this sample. You can see the nuclei. So you can see the range of what some different microscope cameras look like. Another eyepiece adapter camera. This is from Amscope. I bought this on Amazon. This was $120. Go ahead and, okay, going to put it in there, put it over. And I got to say, I, I do like the quality of this one. This, I mean, it's, it's nice and crisp. 
there doesn't seem to be a ton of noise. The color accuracy is pretty decent. The frame rate is good. You know, unfortunately, I have seen that I purchased a couple of these different microscope camera adapters, and the quality of them really varies wildly. I mean, this one, this one's good. Don't, don't get me wrong. This one's definitely good. But let me show you one that is $60 and not good. So let's throw this on here. Also, I would say a lot of the megapixel numbers are kind of nonsensical or like, I shouldn't say are nonsensical because they're not wrong. It's just a kind of a misleading metric to be looking at because there are so many other things that go into a camera to make them work well. And I mean, check this out. This is running at like 10 FPS or something like that. Maybe even less than that. You can just see how kind of blurry it is. I mean, the image isn't, isn't horrible. It's definitely not as good as the one that I first showed and it's, it's certainly not as good as the Amscope one we just looked at. But I, it's just, there are so many options out there. And like, I normally would say that you get what you pay for, but in this case, you didn't get what you paid for. This one was uh, $15 more expensive than this one, but this one performed significantly better. And I think what it comes down to is, is actually how old the image sensors are that are inside of these. That's one area that's made a lot of progress in these last couple of years, especially as far as microscopes go, is that microscope cameras, the, you know, the processors that are, that are in them and the image sensors have gotten a lot better. And so now we can push through a lot more bandwidth onto, you know, through it through a USB cable than we could previously. So this one's this one's a bust and kind of a bummer. I wish I wish I could say they're all great. They're not. Next up we have the trinocular camera. This is the Horizons camera. This comes on the Horizons kit. This one you can do HDMI, you can do it over USB, you can also record directly onto an SD card and there's a remote that works for this thing. Um, this trinocular port is kind of an interesting one. Um, it has a couple of different slots that you can you can have on this. So this is a microscope eyepiece adapter for the trinocular port so that you can take an eyepiece and slot it on there so you can look down the barrel for, uh, it's basically for like optical alignment purposes. Um, but so this is a C-mount trinocular camera. C-mount is the most common format that you're gonna find on consumer grade microscopes and you just thread it on as such and it's there, it's nice and secure. The really nice thing about the C-mount cameras and a trinocular port is that they're mechanically affixed to the microscope. Um, these other eyepiece camera adapters, regardless of which one, are, are not actually being held in there by anything other than gravity. Um, so that's, you know, if you're moving around your microscope or something, you have to be careful it doesn't fall out. Of course, the other really nice thing about the trinocular port cameras is that you can look through the eyepieces and use the camera at the same time. The thing that I, I would point out though is that in order to make them so that they're both in focus at the exact same time, AKA being par focal with each other, um, is that you, at least on this one, you know, some different microscopes will do it differently. On this one, there's this little tube that you can untighten the jam nut and then you can rotate this out to change the, the height distance of it. And so you can, you can kind of set the par focality like that, uh, but not every microscope is gonna be able to do something like that. Um, this one can, thankfully. Okay, so now I have the Horizons camera all hooked up and I'm doing it just in the USB mode over to my computer right now. And this is the image view software that we have for this. Um, and I'll need to optimize this a little bit. So what we really, the purpose that we got this camera was because it has the ability to do HDMI just directly to a big screen TV. Um, I, I've worked with a lot of um, microscopes that do and don't have HDMI. And I've ended up finding that for most people, just using an HDMI that plugs straight into a TV that's just plug and play, no hassle, you don't have to fits around with software is downloading anything, uh, makes, makes a pretty big difference for people. Um, and so that's, that's why we chose to get this. Um, this does do 4K. If you want to do it to actually record in 4K though, you have to do it onto the SD card. <laughs> Microscope cameras have a bunch of secret limitations that people don't really realize. So for example, on this one, one of its secret limitations is it can only transmit 1080p, which is full HD video over USB and over the HDMI. So if you wanna get that full quality, you have to save it to the SD card. But that being said, the kind of catch here too is that the difference between a 4K image and a not 4K image, so difference between 4K and 1080p, you actually can't tell that there's a difference because 
it's not the resolution of the camera that's limiting everything now. It's actually the sample setup and the quality of the microscope optical train, but more importantly, the sample prep. That really becomes a limiting factor um, and the numerical aperture of your objective and that kind of stuff. Um, so when I review the 4K versus the not 4K on this thing, as far as like perceptually, they're not, they're not really that different. Um, the other thing I do like about this one um, is it has a remote that you can use. So you can like remote start, stop, change the settings, that kind of stuff. Um, the, also this has 48 megapixels, which sounds insanely huge, right? And it's true, that is a lot of megapixels. But again, it doesn't really give you better image clarity because again, it's about your sample prep. That's gonna be the limiting factor for the vast majority of people. The other thing I really like about this camera software that comes with the Horizons camera is it has this cool image stitching feature. So you can basically drag around the image and it'll automatically generate for you like a larger, much larger image than what the microscope can actually produce on its own. So you kind of just like drag it around and it does, it does create some artifacts and I, I have yet to kind of become uh, really good at using the software. I'm sure it's like a kind of learning curve to it, but you can make these like huge images. One of the things I want to do is I want to get, um, I want to get like, a, you know, 500 megapixel image of a of a twenty dollar bill or something like that, so you can like just keep zooming in and keep seeing more and more stuff. Um, and that's something that this type of software you would be able to do would do with that. So, what's my parting advice for getting a microscope camera? How to take pictures? Number one, smartphones work okay. Uh, they definitely do. They don't work great for taking videos just because you know you have to move your hands around and stuff like that. But for image, they're they're pretty good. I mean, they have good cameras on them. If you're going to get a smartphone microscope adapter, just be aware that there's a good chance that it just doesn't work for you or your microscope setup because the optical alignment of everything has to be so particular. Um, uh, microscope eyepiece adapter cameras, USB, work great. But again, there's the, the problem is that there are just so many options out there and there's not you can't just decide based on what the megapixels are, you can't decide based on what the resolution is. 4K is not necessarily better than 1080p. You can't decide on just the frame rate because, and you can't decide on just the price, um, as, I, as I learned by buying a thing that was more expensive and way worse. Um, and it's because there are so many factors that go into camera image sensors and whether or not they're gonna work on your setup um, that is not obvious and not really a spec that you can, you can make. Um, so really, I mean, the, I wish I could give you an easy answer and I, I really would just say the brand matters a lot um, here. Seeing the brand and seeing like evidence of what the actual images and pictures look like that come off of it. Um, I have stopped trusting Amazon listings from random Chinese companies. I, there's nothing wrong with Chinese equipment, let me be clear. Um, all of Amscope stuff, all of our stuff come from Chinese suppliers. We're just picking good Chinese suppliers. Um, but a lot of these Amazon listings will like put images of how their cameras perform that's actually not really from their camera. So you really have to trust the brand that you're buying these things from um, at the end of the day because you can't just ba go based off of metrics. You can't just go based off of price. Um, and that, that's about it. Uh, tri I guess trinoculars, I mean, trinoculars are great. It's definitely a, a great feature to have. Um, it's, I would say it's, it's it's maybe a luxury thing, to be honest, at least for the consumer market um, in a professional setting, they're, they're much more useful. Um, but I personally very rarely want to both record and use the eyepieces at the same time. I just watch the screen of what I'm recording on the camera because it looks basically as good as what you're seeing through the eyepieces anyway. Um, and that's it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. hope it was helpful for you. I know there's so much information out there. Um, or so many different options out there for microscope cameras. It can be very confusing, very wild. Um, but yeah, if you like what we're doing here, check us out, microsafari.org. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you again next time.